So Simon, we're at Martlesham Car Park, which is uh, was one of our first permeable paving jobs installed in 2003. Uh, can you tell us a little bit of the history about it? Well, this is a park and ride site for Ipswich, and back in the early 90s, Suffolk County Council decided it was going to introduce park and ride to Ipswich. And this is the third site of um, that was developed on the east side of Ipswich. The other two are on the south side and the north side. So this is the east side. And this is um, an area of just paddock, um, acid grassland, heathland. And uh, we developed it to be low profile, um, sustainable and low impact. It's quite pioneering for its time. Um, can you tell us why you selected permeable paving rather than any other drainage technique? Well, it seems as though it was a natural selection really because the ground is very porous. There didn't seem any point in collecting the water in pipes and gullies, disposing it at a single point. The site is completely porous, so permeable paving was the obvious solution. But surely back in 2003, you will have um, come up against some objections because it was fairly new technology back then. How did you handle that? Well, because of the site's so sensitive and we wanted to demonstrate some sustainability to the site. And back in the early 2000s, sustainability was sort of early cutting edge stuff. But fortunately, the Suffolk County Council was sort of broad minded enough to take a take a, not a leap of faith, but to follow some good practice that had already been set elsewhere. It's not the only sustainable drainage measure on the site. It's not the only sustainable um, measure on the site. What are some of the other features that you've incorporated into the design? Well, the, the terminal building there has got a seed and roof, so the water falls on the roof, soaks in, and drips off into the bushes here, which is a pond. All the grey water and foul water from the um, terminal building is treated on site go through a reed bed and dispose of in a soak away. So there's no public connection with um, sewers. So it's a, it's a completely zero discharge completely site. Completely zero discharge site. As far as the paving's concerned, um, as well as dealing with water, it needs to cope with the traffic as well. How's it coping structurally? Very well, very well. There's 500 and odd spaces here, about 13,000 square metres of thermal paving. And very little, if any, has suffered any structural movement, integrity, problems at all. It's perfectly formed pretty well. So have you had any issues with uh, clogging of the joints? No, the, the joints, are, as you can probably see later on, but um, the joints do have moss in them, but they're a porous substance anyway, so the water just goes through them like a sponge. There's been no problem at all. So any maintenance you've done is really just for aesthetic purposes? Yeah, just, just for keeping it clean, tidy. So it's fair to say, it's working successfully both structurally and hydraulically. Um, what do you think's made it so successful? I think probably from the very start, we involved a provider, a supplier of the materials to um, help us design and um, install, install the, the product. Um, and we had involvement from um, Professor Napton through Marshalls to do this. And we had tests done before we laid any blocks on the stability of the, the, um, the blocks in a certain pattern and herring bone pattern and um, um, normal straight bond patterns, see which is the best for different areas and the permeability of the blocks and the permeability of the soil. So it was, it was sort of involvement early on with those that know about their product. We're on the overflow car park now, but it's got quite a slope on it, the fall of probably one in 20, one in 25. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you designed for that? We used the existing topography to decide where the facilities were. The park and I building over my shoulder was at the high spot, so any problems with um, water um, running over surfaces and um, ponding wouldn't be actually influenced on the um, impact on the building. So um, in the moment, we don't have problems at all with um, ponding. It's um, maybe you know, really exceedance routes. Um, very high flows of water, collect at a low spot and um, maybe last for about half hour and, and then disappear. So what's interesting there is you've designed it in case the permeable paving failed yeah. so that any water would run off to a space that wasn't heavily used. 
but in actual fact, it's not that yeah, exceedance yeah, isn't necessary. Not necessary, but it's, it's worth planning into the site design to make sure that you don't have any problems if there is exceedance routes causing ponding, but we haven't had that problem. One thing that's immediately noticeable is that there's vegetation all the way around the edge of the site, some really quite tall trees and well-established shrubs. What kind of issues have you had with those? We haven't had any particular issues. I mean, the, the trees around the site had to be retained because of um, environmental issues. But all we do is sweep the surface occasionally when there's fall, fall of twigs and stuff after storms and leaf fall in the autumn, sweep it off and it's good to go again. Another thing I've noticed is that there are quite a lot of very mature trees dotted sporadically around the site. What's the story there? They were part of the site before we moved in to um, convert it to a car park. So we built the car park, designed the car park, built it around the trees. Um, and they're, they're, they're as they were before when there was a horse meadow. So what issues have you had with tree roots growing in the sub base? We haven't had any particular issues, no, not at all. We haven't seen any visible signs of uh, rutting or visible roots coming up or anything like that. So perfectly sound. There are a number of lighting columns and CCTV cameras uh, around the site. How have you accommodated the services? The services to supply the columns and the CCTV are under the pavement, in ducts, so if we need to renew any um, cable work, we can just pull through um, new cables and supply them like that, no, no problem. Obviously, this project was ahead of its time when it was designed in 2003, um, but SUDs have moved on a lot in the last 17 years. With that in mind, is there anything that you might have done differently? I think the only thing we might have done differently is uh, the treatment around the trees. The moment they're, they're raised above the level of the blocks, we actually may have reduced the level down below the block level and let water into the area around the trees by gaps in curbs. So um, it's actually a rain garden, something like that. But other than that? Nothing. No, perfect. Well, it's great to hear that it's working so well. Um, what we're going to do now is to perform some infiltration tests on various spots all over the site um, to prove what's happening with the infiltration rates. In this test, we're going to pour 10 litres of water into this sealed tube. That'll create a head of about 140 millimetres. To put that in context, that's more than a month of heavy rainfall. 